Hello and welcome, uh, everybody. I especially uh, welcome to our dear guests, uh, the directors of the films that are presented within uh, the section Fascinations this year. Uh, and it is uh, Mike Holboom uh, and uh, Elisa Wendy. And we will devote uh, this hour uh, to discussion uh, with them about their uh, films. Uh, first, we will talk with uh, Mike Holboom, and then uh, after approximately uh, 30, 35 minutes, uh, uh, we will talk uh, with Elisa Wendy. Uh, I also see that we uh, have, uh, have an audience, we have some attendees here, so uh, please let me say several uh, technical questions, how the attendees can uh, be part of the discussion. So, uh, people from the audience, uh, Adam B. and uh, Ladislav Tmiral, maybe, maybe the others who are watching now and are thinking about becoming an attendees, you can participate in this discussion. Of course, we are trying to uh, recreate the festival experience in this virtual space, uh, especially in this, uh, in this area of uh, uh, the after film discussions uh, with the directors. Uh, so if you have any question during uh, our, our dialogue, uh, please just uh, use the function raise your hand and then I will unmute you and you can say your question uh, loudly. Wow, or nice. the other option is that you can write down your question uh, to the chat and I will read the question for you. So, Mike, first of all, I, I, have, to, I have to tell you that uh, the film Touch Memory Vietnam, it's, it's really, it spoke to me so much. It's, it's really an, an uh, outstanding film. And there are so, there are so, <laughs> there are so many uh, layers of uh, meanings I would like to discuss with you. Uh, and also what, what I really uh, loved and I, I, um, I feel that every time I watched the film, I was discovering uh, new and new uh, formal elements that are part of the film, especially in audio, uh, but also uh, in the images. I was still discovering some new, uh, new, new detail that somehow uh, I could put together to, to the puzzle of, uh, of the uh, of, of the layers of uh, the meanings. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to ask you several questions about uh, about the content and about the uh, uh, message uh, uh, in the film. And I I feel, uh, but please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, that there is a very strong uh, personal uh, level uh, where you are ha having uh, a personal dialogue uh, with your father. And there is also this uh, broader uh, social uh, level where you are uh, thinking, as I think is uh, often in, in your films, uh, that you are thinking about the um, the questions how the society is structured and how the uh, institutions work and uh, uh, maybe here also in the connection with a certain territory. We will talk about Vietnam. So uh, at the beginning, uh, if it is possible for you to, uh, to elaborate on this uh, topic of, uh, uh, of the dialogue with your father, uh, uh, could you uh, could you tell me why your father was connected uh, for you with this uh, uh, topic of uh, uh, of uh, Vietnam, especially because uh, you are also saying that you lost your father, but you also lost the Vietnam. So there is some obvious parallel. Uh, could you speak about that? Um, Josephine's father, not my father. It's a collaboration between Josephine and I, yeah? yeah you are right, Josephine uh, Berto uh, is the co-author, so, so yes. it's Josephine's father. Thank you for uh, um, correcting yeah. me. Yeah, so like I, I live in Canada. It's a country of immigrants. The only people that are 
like, you know, you could say like the only people that really belong here are the indigenous people. But we did what most settler colony, um, colonial countries do, which is just to, you know, either erase them or marginalize them. And, um, and after that, people have come from every country in the world to live here. Um, it's very usual that people that look like they're Korean, Chinese, Vietnamese, from uh, Thai, whatever, um, are, you know, you immediately associate them with these countries. And yet, but most of them, most of the people that I know um, don't speak those languages. They were born here. They have very little relationship or a, an abstracted relationship to supposedly their home country, even though this is really their home country. And so these, so there's questions of identity, like how do, how do these lineages, um, how do you create continuity and why, why are there breaks? And I think it has something to do with um, questions of assimilation, the promise that so-called citizenship makes. Citizenship is a kind of a frame in which certain kinds of people or certain kinds of behavior or even certain skin colors are okay and others are not okay. And so I think there's encouragements in various ways to leave behind countries, leave behind you know, former countries. Um, and at the same time, there's also cultural initiatives, schools, or there's also resistances to that. You know? And so you use the word puzzle. And I think for Josephine, like I, the identity is, um, and for many of us, identity is a kind of puzzle um, made up of pieces that are different countries that live inside our, our bodies. You know? I see. So, so, so now it, it also connects uh, connects with uh, with other part of the of, of the s s subtitles uh, that are part of the uh, uh, visuality of, of the film. Uh, that there was stated that that uh, the father said that the memory is the second chance. Oh yeah. And, uh, so 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 th this really corresponds with the question of uh, of the identity uh, that uh, because we are and and uh, and, and probably uh, the, the, the people who has a uh, 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 diverse background uh, they are reinventing their identities uh, in 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 time and, uh, and you could and, say that they have a develop they might develop a second body. A kind of a ghost body that lives um, both in the country they've never seen and uh, and is on its way to the country that they will never quite arrive in yeah mm -hmm. yeah I see and uh, and now, now you mentioned the the motive of, of the body and I, I have to say that uh, it has such a great rhythm the film the way how it is edited and the way how uh, you work with the uh, um, with the um, that uh, some of the uh, shots are in the slow motion but in different uh, rates some some uh, shots are very slow and some of them are not so slow but but the overall rhythm it's it's so so uh, really captivating that, that, that you are really inside the film. And in this rhythm, it seemed to me that, that, the, that one of the main visual motifs were faces and, uh, and bodies of, of the people uh, from nowadays, ob obviously, uh, but also of the people that are in the archival footage. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, how, how so, so were you concentrated on on this visual <clears throat> of, of the body, or or is it just a uh, just outcome of uh, how you wanted to work uh, with, with the rhythm? That uh, so, so what was it intentional the emphasizing of the visual motif of face and and body in that? 
Yeah, I mean, that, I think that all came from Josephine's work with the archival images. Um, very often you see people enacting certain kinds of strategies um, or techniques that they're subjecting so-called found footage to. You know, it's like a machine that you put it in and something comes out the other end. And what she did um, was project it frame by frame and then begin to um, touch it. She wanted to touch these pictures with her paintbrush, you know? She comes out, out of a painting background. And these uh, images are, are uh, it's all set in a uh, Vietnamese uh, prison camp. How to return our bodies to this moment, you know? How, how to have a relationship with these pictures. Um, and how to let, how to, not just how to touch them, but how to let them touch us, you know? And I think this is the, um, and she, she lets the circuit sort of run through her paintbrush as she, um, you know, fills in some grass or colors a face or, or a hand, you know? And so, of course, the primary relationship, the first relationship is, with the body, between these bodies. And while there's very contemporary pictures of Vietnam <clears throat> um, and an array of people that are, that are meeting each other or meeting the camera's look, you know, in this moment, in this present, but in a sense, they're also part of an archival array, just like we are right now. Like we're already vanishing, we're already disappearing and becoming ghosts. And these words will never be remembered. <clears throat> and um, uh, we, we are um, counting on this forgetting so that new things can come in, you know? And, and, it, and this, it creates a kind of a, a compost, like a, something that's like underneath, you know? And then new, new, new festivals, new, new ideas, new, new things can, can, come, can come out of those ghosts, you know? But I really very much like the, uh, the, the expression that uh, it, we count with forgetting or we count with uh, the fact that what we are uh, just now saying or, or, or living will be covered by uh, the following uh, events and following, following words in other conversations. And uh, yes, this... Uh, this uh, touching i was uh i was uh, especially it, it it really seemed to me that the selection uh, of the archi archival uh, images uh was also lead was was uh, mot motivated uh, by uh by the motive of uh, s several bodies in some haptic contact so so there are mm, many images of, of some kind of haptic contact or a close proximity. And then the, the way how she uh, appropriates the, these yes. images by yes. painting on them, uh, this is the, the second level of uh, the haptic uh, con contact. So I, I really uh, appreciated this uh, this. Uh, communication of the content uh, of the image and of the performative act that uh, the co-director made with, with, with the images. It was really brilliant, yes. And also I would say that there's some moments where the archival image, it comes first, and then we see an image of Josephine in the present, so-called. And her gesture is an echo or a rhyme of the image that comes before. So there's a man that reaches for a plant and then she reaches for a plant. Or there's uh, someone with a little kid with a red balloon and then she has a red balloon. Yes. Or there's a man that is opening these, the shutters, you know? It's like I'm opening my heart, you know, to the city or to this moment. And then she does this big gesture with her arms, you know? She's like opening, opening. And it's as if these images even unseen, 
even the people that are unmet in this place are creating a script that we follow, you know, that, that somehow is understood or somehow is known in our body. You, you see this with birds all the time, you know, how, how do they fly like that? You know, it's just like, they just know that they make these crazy, you know, they fly in big flocks of hundreds of birds sometimes or dozens or sometimes, you know, and somehow their body just knows to swerve to the left, swerve to the right, swerve, you know, it's just, an, and we also have this, you know, we're also, we also have this animal life. And um, I think it, it connects us to a kind of a, I don't know, ancestral memories or, or things that are even going on right now. It's a cross-cultural bridge. And the images are trying to suggest that, that these, that the that these unmet people become scripts for our own lives. Oh, yeah, I see. Oh, that's beautiful. I see. Uh huh. I see. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, the, yeah, the, that's really a beautiful uh, concept for the also for for the uh, for the editing. And as I said, I think that the rhythm is is, is really really uh, masterful. And uh, I wanted to ask, ask you uh, also about the sound, because it, it seemed to me, but I don't know if, if uh, like, uh, I uh, very sensitively um, uh, uh, per, uh, perceived uh, the, the environments where the people are, especially in the, in the archival images, the, the, the motive of labor camps or prison camps, uh, prison camps, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very strong because uh, it's a very particular uh, experience, like a shameful experience uh, that what these people uh, went through. And, uh, uh, and uh, it, uh, it, 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 it seemed to me that there were motives uh, in audio uh, that were adding some other contexts uh, uh, to, to, to this uh, uh, to these shots or sequences for example in some part uh, i had a, a feeling that uh, there is a sound that evokes um, shooting like shooting from a gun uh, or some other kinds of shootings and, and in one moment, I, I was thinking, is it a fireworks maybe, but maybe some oh, yeah. completely other. So, so, so I was not, uh, I was really not sure what is the source, but it was not so important. Important is what it evokes in connection with those images. So, yeah. so could, could you, could you elaborate more on this uh, audio uh, level? How, how you thought about that, what, what it should uh, represent and with what kind of sounds uh, did you work? Yeah, sound um, has become more and more important for me. Um, and I'm remembering in the Ziga Vertov period how um, Godard and Goran spoke about the importance of sound and they, they, they thought that the class struggle could be shown in the cinema as a struggle between <laughs> the sound and the image yeah. <laughs> and that they would make the sound more important, you know, in order to, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> so that the ruling, the, the, it's like the working class, you know, <laughs> is the sound, you know, something like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, um, sounds, um, like as John Cage, uh, taught us when he went into the anechoic chamber to find real silence, you know, and then, and what he found there was the sound of his own heart and the sound of his own blood running through his veins. In other words, there, there is no silence. We're always in the midst of a soundscape. And that soundscape is changing and affecting our sense of who we are, of who other people are, of our political possibilities, of our relationship to our environment, our ecology, in other words, is sort of, you could say, is grounded in sound. <clears throat> Though as a sense organ, you know, our ears are like below our, our eyes, you know? It's like in the cinema, you say like, oh, I'm gonna go see the movies, you know, you don't go like, oh, I'm going to go hear the movies, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, oh yeah. Um, so I tried to give every picture its own sound, or I tried to give 
every sound its own picture, you know? And pictures are also, uh, sounds are also making, creating pictures and associations. And so I'm trying to work at this level where, um, for instance, in Vietnam, of course, um, the Vietnam War, or as they called it in Vietnam, the American War, um, yeah. ended in the 1970s. But the traces of that war and the consequences, the effects of that war are multi-generational. I mean, there was so much destruction that happened, so many, so much chemical poisoning and bombs, et cetera, you know, and, and people wounded and killed. Um, so this sense of uh, like present day celebrations and embracing uh, our new possibilities in these newly remade, you know, in these remade cities. Um, and at the same time, it's under, it's underlaid, you know, there's this, this underlayer of this, this, the unwanted memory, the ongoing trauma of this, of what must have seemed like an endless war. I mean, they had to fight the French, they defeated the French first and then the Americans. Um, so some of that is evoked in the sound. There's celebration, um, sounds, but like the fireworks that you mentioned, but those celebrations could also be like, oh, what if I had gone through the war and I had, you know, and I'd lost people because of cannon fire or aircraft fire, you know, it, I think it evokes some, some of that, you know? Um, and then in the, in the prison camp, there's a, there's a very striking scene that Josephine reworks where two people are um, two Vietnamese prisoners are encased in a black box. It has these two little um, spots in the box as if two little holes, two little air holes, <laughs> it's kind of incredible, as if they were, the box had eyes. You know? Anyway, and it's opened by this white man who is presumably a you know, United Nations observer or something like that. But it's a very shocking sort of colonial moment, you know? And, and the conditions, you could just imagine what it might be like there. So how to evoke some of that suffering and how systemic and ongoing that suffering was, you know? Um, I thought the, it's one thing to see it, but um, like for many, seeing, seeing happens at a distance, you know? Mm -hmm. Seeing is the way that we create distance, actually, between ourselves. Whereas sound is something that always, you're always in the middle of sound, you know? You're just in the middle, you, you, can't, you, you can't close your ears. You, you can only close your eyes, you know? And so there's no escaping it in some sense. There's no escaping the fact that, of, there's no escaping the relationship that's, that's there or that's developing in real time, you know, in now. Yeah. And I just wanted to say that, um, Often in conversation, even in conversations like this, like what can be important is not anything that anybody says, because who can remember all these fancy ideas or whatever? Yeah? You just remember the tone. Yeah. You just remember the tone of the voice. Like, oh yeah, that was very satisfying. It was like, no, I didn't, I didn't like that tone, or you know. <laughs> and um, I think often films can be like that too. That you know, they they leave you with this. Um, they leave you, um, they return you to your own life, but there's something extra. There's something that's been added. And it often it can be something that you can't quite say exactly what it is, you know? It could be some different sensitivity, um, maybe to a certain kind of sound. It might be, um, uh, it, you know, it might be informational, but often films work on some other level, on some kind of bodily unconscious level, right, which can create changes. Yeah, yeah and, 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 uh, and uh, as you mentioned, the, the, the tone or, uh, or uh, the, yeah, uh, it, it, it's also about uh, like what, what we emphasize and uh, and emphasizing is also not only through the words that we choose, but also through the tone, of course. So, so in fact, the tone brings the message as well, and maybe is really more memorable 
uh, than <laughs> the, the, the certain sequences of the words. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I see, I see. And uh, as, as, you, as you mentioned, um, uh, a, a system or, uh, or th th that something structures our experience in a systemic way, uh, I uh, observed one more, or, or I was uh, interested in one more motif uh, uh, in the film, and it was a motif of, uh, maybe this will be too far away, but <laughs> we'll see, uh, the, the motifs of, uh, of uh, institutions or institutionality. Yes, thank you. Uh, and, uh, there was one uh, explicit part uh, where the subtitle said uh, something like uh, the schools are production machines for students or that they produce uh, the students. And I also r remembered uh, uh, your uh, one of your previous films, uh, We Make Couples, uh, where uh, there was a very clear parallel uh, between, uh, mm, between production mode uh, in the industry or in the society and uh, production, production mode in the, in, in the relationships. Uh, so so this, uh, th this way, way uh, of so, so I see that this film is also one of the ways how to explore uh, w what w what uh, is w what is uh, uh, being created as a result of some systemic functioning of certain institutions, and uh, uh, there was this motive of school, but. The much stronger motive uh, are the labor or the, the, the prison camps. They are also institutions with the rules and with, with, with uh, everything that uh, they also have the purpose to produce certain kind of uh, discipline, certain kind of. Yes, exactly. uh, yeah, how, how the bodies uh, should be uh, arranged in the space and exactly. how they should, uh, they, they, they should, they should behave. So, uh, so, so, was, uh, so, so why this motif was important uh, for you uh, in the film? Was it in the connection of the personal identities that are also co-created by uh, uh, the, uh, different institutions or is there a, any, any other uh, like connecting motive or motivation, why uh, uh, this this topic is uh, so present in the film. Um, maybe I can just mention one other instance where in Vietnam, someone is reaching towards a plant in the countryside. And in Geneva, Josephine reaches for a plant in a hothouse, in a created environment in a structured environment that's enclosed, you know? Uh -huh. um, and so it's, it provides this very soft um, echo of the prison camp that's to come, you know? Um, I see. It's definitely, um, uh, it definitely points to exactly as you described, identity as a construction site. Um, and it's obviously related to um, the capitalism which unites these two countries in unfortunate and asymmetrical relationships, which, as just as you said, um, has to do with the disciplining of bodies. Um, how should we behave? Um, how should we perform our genders? What is what does work mean? Where um, uh, the question of education, which is about uh, which is very often about producing useful citizens, citizens that will produce goods or services or, you know, that will fit in to um, a society, to an understanding of a society that's most usually produced by a ruling class of some kind. Um, in various kinds of ruling classes in different places. And then there's resistances to that. But I think those questions of, or the alignment of these systems with the, with the prison system, or work itself in capitalism with the prison system, um, 
it's interesting. I've been going back to the early moments, the, the uh, uh, origins of capitalism to see how work was reconceived, you know, how a different kind of capitalism required a different kind of work and a different kind of worker and a different kind of discipline, you know, than a serf who was just on, who has their own land and then they have, and then they're kind of, they have this land bondage. It's just a different way of conceiving of workers. And so the surveillance state that we're presently in just seems like a very much an extension um, of this project of the disciplining of bodies. It's necessary that bodies be totally visible that, and that as workers, we be completely accessible. Like the home is no longer a retreat or a place that we end work. It's like, oh no, no, no. We've, we've just invited, the home is turned into a factory, right? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, except uh, maybe now when, uh like 90% of people are working from their homes because they have to work from, from a home office. So, so this, uh, this positive is definitely changing uh, mm -hmm. because of these uh, uh, pandemic conditions. So uh, I will now ask uh, our attendees. Oh. If, uh, some of you have uh, questions, uh, you have not rose your hand, uh, but maybe uh, you have a question. So uh, now, because we will be closing uh, this interview, so I'm looking to chat and I'm looking to Q&A section. Uh, so if you have a question, you can either raise your hand and I can uh, let you speak, or you can write down the question to the chat. Yeah, it seems that we don't have questions from, from, from the attendees. It's usual. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I, I think that uh, it's, it's, it's maybe really this, uh, this, this online mode that uh, we have to um, repeat to the audience that you can be part of it. It's really interactive. It is the same as, it's not the same, but it's very similar as if we would be in the cinema theater standing there in front of you and you, you can, you can uh, uh, say your questions. Maybe we need to start to, uh, with interviews with people in the audience first. Yes, maybe some of them could be the moderators who would yeah, lead part of the interviews. And then it could just be this free for all, I don't know, all kinds of people saying things. That would be so interesting. <laughs> like a, but it, it could be also a, a, a debate because the, the audience doesn't need to have a question. They can have, have comments. And of yes, course, of course, have, yes. Uh, the, the discussion together. So uh, Mike, I will uh, thank you very much. For Thanks your... very much for your great intelligent questions and comments and insights. I always learn so much. It's always such a pleasure to, to talk to you. And especially I'm so happy that uh, we have uh, this film in Fascinations and it will be available for, uh, for our audience even in even longer time than usual because the festival now is a week longer. And, uh, and, and also, if, if, you, if you remember that in Ihlava, it was usually uh, difficult uh, to get into the screening hall because they were totally <laughs> packed and totally full. And, and, and now in this mode, at least this advantage that we don't see the film on the big screen, oh, but everybody can <laughs> get into the cinema and see the film. So that's very true. That, that's great. So, Mike, thank you very much for being uh, uh, with us. Okay. Yes, Take thank care. you. Stay okay. safe. Okay, you too. All right, bye for now. Goodbye.